If you guys are familiar with Japanese culture, then you will know that bento boxes are single portioned out meals that can usually be found at convenience stores. However, since the pandemic and indoor dining being temporarily unavailable, I discovered that people in food establishments have taken the concept of takeout and elevating it to a whole new level in meaning. In this video, I'm gonna talk about two places I found in Southern California selling really fancy bento boxes and whether or not they're worth the high price tag. The first place I'm gonna talk about is actually a small pop-up bento business I found on Instagram called Tsukiyuki LA. The chef and owner Yuki was actually a sushi chef from Osaka, Japan, and she needed a new way to support her family since the pandemic compromised her full-time jobs. And that's when she decided to create these really extravagant bento boxes made with black truffles and A5 Japanese Wagyu. I have seen her boxes all across social media and I just had to try it for myself. It looked so pretty on Instagram, but when I saw it in real life, it looked even better in person. I instantly fell in love with how she packaged the bento box and how she plated it. Even unwrapping the bento box was an experience because the whole process felt very intricate and delicate. There are two types of bento boxes you can try from Chef Yuki, one of them being regular and the other premium. With the regular bento box, it comes with shaved black truffle, A5 Japanese Wagyu, cured golden egg yolk on top of rice with sides of corn tofu with dashi jelly, simmered asparagus, and pickled watermelon radish. And this box costs $45. And if you're feeling a little bit extra fancy, then definitely go for the premium box, which is what I got. In this box, it's actually the same as the regular. However, she does add sea urchin and ikara for an extra $20. Making the total of the second box the $65. And if you want extra black shaved truffle, then that's an extra $10 to each bowl. And in order to get this box, I'm not gonna lie guys, it's kind of a process. You can't just like go on their website or go on the DoorDash app and ordering what you want and just pay. You actually have to go onto their IG account and wait until they post that they are open for orders. Through my experience, I found that they usually open up their order forms and post around Monday or at the beginning of the week so you can pick up your bento boxes on a weekend. The pickup locations change every week, but they pretty much rotate around the LA area such as San Gabriel Valley, Salt Hill, Roland Heights, K-Town, and even OC. So I'm on my way to go pick up my bento box right now, and the pickup location that I chose is Roland Heights, and we're gonna meet at a Japanese market called Najiya Market, and the pickup location in the parking lot will be messaged to me when I get there. So I'm just gonna go head over there right now. It says it's gonna take 30 minutes. The post will actually have directions of how you can place an order, but basically in short, all you have to do is send her a DM of your name, what you wanna order, your quantity, and also your pickup location. And then once she receives your DM, she'll actually send you information on how to pay for the bento boxes. I know this whole process seems a little bit difficult, however, my number one tip through this whole process is to make sure you have post notifications on because when they post that they are open for orders, you actually have to be quick and make an order as soon as possible or else they're gonna be sold out within minutes. Through my experience when trying to order for the first time, I think my pickup location got sold out within 10 minutes. Luckily, I was able to reserve a box. However, if you really wanna try this box, then you gotta be quick and be committed to making an order. So my first initial reactions are that this bento box is so pretty. She plated everything very beautifully. You can definitely see all the ingredients that she used. Mm. You can definitely taste the meatiness of the A5 Wagyu as well as the shaved truffle. And what I love about this is because since truffle has a very strong taste and aroma, it doesn't overpower everything else in the dish. And underneath all the toppings is Japanese rice, and I don't think she seasoned the rice. Since everything else is already well seasoned, you can definitely taste all the flavor that soaks into all the rice. The Wagyu is fresh, the uni is fresh, Everything in this box is really fresh. And if you go onto her Instagram page, sometimes she posts stories and she hands picks all the ingredients that she uses for the week. And right here we have the golden cured egg yolk. My initial reaction for this is that it's gooey. Since it's cured, I thought it was gonna have like a salted flavor to it. However, it the flavor is very neutral. You can definitely taste the yolk flavor as if the yolk was liquid you know how sometimes you cook eggs and 
you want to keep the yolk liquid so that it has that nice luscious creamy texture or flavor to it that's what this egg yolk tastes like. It has that creamy taste to it. However, it's more solidified. When I first saw this, I didn't read the menu, so I thought this was tamago or egg, but it's actually corn tofu, which I thought was really cool. Mmm. The corn tofu was very soft, like melt in your mouth, and it doesn't have like a gritty texture to it. It's not as silky as like regular tofu made from soybeans. However, I think she did a really good job trying to mimic that. And overall, I really like this side dish. It's so good. I know the corn tofu comes with dashi jelly. However, I feel like the dashi was very, very subtle. I couldn't really taste it. Overall, I really love this bento and I would definitely purchase it again. I really enjoyed the experience and the attention to detail that this bento came with. In all honesty, I felt like I would have just been content with the bento itself since I really loved how it tasted. However, the fact that she took time to wrap it with this like little piece of fabric kind of made it more special and a little bit more enjoyable. For this next place, it's actually from a restaurant called Yakia, which is in Rowan Heights, about 20 miles from central LA. And this restaurant specializes in barbecued meats, kind of like an omakase style type of experience. Unfortunately, I never got a chance to try dining into the restaurant. However, I did try their Yakia box, which is this beautifully curated box of special cuts of meats and some of it being sourced from Japan. They actually created this box since they had to close indoor dining due to the pandemic and needed a new way to serve their customers but still give them an elevated experience. And when you order the box, it actually includes four different types of beef. And my box included seared prime ribeye cap, smoked filet mignon, a New York strip of A5 Japanese Wagyu, and miso glazed American Wagyu short rib on top of a bed of Japanese rice. And this box also includes a variety of sides from vegetables to beef tongue to fruit for a total of $68 before tax and tip. And you guys, this box was absolutely stunning. I loved how it came in a very sustainable wooden box, but also had this very simple, but still kind of elegant type of packaging. And the box also came with a menu card which lists out everything that you were eating. Plus, it also had a QR code that you can scan for reheating instructions in case you want to eat it later. So my first impressions with this bento box is that there's quite a bit of meat in here. There are about four kinds and it's plated really beautifully. There is a lot of color and a lot of side dishes. However, uh, based on the pictures that I've seen on social media and my foodie friends posting this box, I thought the meat was gonna be a little bit more rare or like more red, which is what I personally like. So the first meat is the prime ribeye cap. This is what it looks like. So this one is seared, so it doesn't have a lot of seasoning in it. Um, I think that one's like pretty neutral. It's not super juicy, but it's also not dry. I still think it has a, like a bit of meaty flavor to it though. So I am eating this cold and they say you can either eat it cold or reheat it up and there are instructions in the back of the car. I am gonna reheat it later to see if it does make a difference. So the next one is prime filet mignon and this one is just seasoned with smoked black pepper. I definitely taste the black pepper, however, I feel like it is the same as the other one where it's not dry, but it's also not super juicy. So it's later now and I reheated this for about 30-40 seconds. The microwave that I'm using is not that powerful, so it's like slightly warm. I didn't want to microwave it too much or else it will overcook. I would say the filet mignon is like still the same. It's not dry but also not juicy it's like slightly like more juicy i can definitely see it but i don't know it's just not as good as i 
It's not as good as I thought it would be. However, I do think the ribeye cap is way better when it's lightly reheated. It has more of a juicy flavor to it. So the next one I'm trying is an A5 Japanese Wagyu. And it is just a small strip of it. Mm. I feel like the Japanese A5 Wagyu is the best one so far. It's juicy, it's tender, it's melt in your mouth. So far, this is the best one. And then the next one is the American Wagyu short rib. This is what it looks like. And this one is just flavored with miso. That one was very flavorful. I think it's because of the miso. There is a lot of sauce on it. So it gives a bit more flavor and moisture to the short rib. However, I don't think the short rib was dry at all. It was pretty tender, it was juicy. What I love about this bento box is that it really gives a contrast of what you're eating. Even though there are a lot of meats, there are also a lot of side dishes as well. And so if you're tired of eating meat, you can also eat like vegetables or the ponzu cherry or anything that really like cleanses your palate. Cause like for me, I get tired of eating stuff pretty quickly. And so having something to cleanse my palate of what I just ate is really helpful. We got mushroom. Mm. I really like this mushroom. It's like very meaty and also like chewy. So for the side dishes, I just tried the cherry ponzu tomato. I didn't taste much ponzu in there. It was just basically just regular tomatoes, which I was kind of a little bit disappointed in because I really love the flavor of ponzu. So I was definitely missing that. And then there's also like crudite vegetables, which are daikon, carrots, and sweet peas. That's just like average vegetables if you want a bit of um, vegetables in your bento box. There's also a side dish of yuzu melon trio, which is like, I think honeydew, cantaloupe, and watermelon. I definitely taste the yuzu in there. It's like a bit subtle, but I can definitely taste it. And here we have the beef tongue. This is with lemon scallion. Mm. Oh, I was not expecting that. It has like a very like subtle, but apparent flavor of lemon and the scallion was not like too overpowering at all. It does like have a tiny spicy kick to it, but I really like the beef tongue. The beef tongue was very easy to chew and it wasn't like gamey or anything. Overall, I think this box is worth a try and it also gives you an opportunity to try different cuts of high quality meats. I think the star of this box was definitely the presentation. And even though their meats were kind of a hit or miss for me take out wise, I would still come back to the restaurant and try other menu items. Plus, I really want to try their omakase barbecued experience. And that was my review on two pretty expensive bento box places around the LA area. And out of the two boxes, let me know which one was your favorite and which one would you try. And let me know also if you think they're worth the high price tag. In my opinion, if you want to try a variety of meats and also other items, then definitely go for the Yakia box. However, if you want something a little bit more luxurious and premium, then definitely go with the Tsukiyuki LA box. Even though the Yakia box was definitely bigger, the Tsukiyuki LA box does include more richer succulent items, which will make you full even faster, even though the bento was a little bit smaller. But anyways, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye! Oh, yeah.